Now that we have deployed our contract to the Mumbai testnet, we're going to build a script that will mint tokens at that contract address. So in our project folder, we'll create a new file called mint.js and here we'll write the minting functionality. First, we're going to need our HD wallet provider. So let's require that from our package truffle HD wallet provider. Following that, we're also going to need web three in this file. So we're going to require the web three module. For this to work, we do have to go into our terminal and we have to import with npm install web three. We have to install the package. Then back in our code editor, we are going to also need fs, which is file system, in order to allow us to access a file at a certain path. And the same thing for path, we'll need that library as well. We'll also need .env to access our environment variables, and we've already installed that. So let's also make sure that we have installed our fs and path packages. So we'll use npm install fs and npm install path to make sure that those are installed. Then back in our code editor, we need to grab the data to our contract. So let's create a variable called data of our NFT, and we're going to use fs file system dot read file sync passing in our path dot resolve our directory name followed by our build slash contracts slash my nft dot json so this is how we can reference the json data of our contract next we need to parse the JSON data and we'll get as a result the contract ABI. We'll use json.parse the data of the NFT. Then we'll have our NFT ABI which is the contract ABI dot ABI property. Next let's open up an asynchronous main function. In here we're going to first get our HD wallet provider. So our provider is using the HD wallet provider object which requires a mnemonic as well as our network. So this will be our network link. So let's declare our mnemonic first. We'll create a const mnemonic and in order to access the mnemonic, we'll use our process.env.mnemonic environment variable. Now, what about a const for the network link? The network link, we are going to format a string. We are using the RPC Mumbai from maticvigil.com. And we're going to pass in our API key and that is passed to the string. Now we do have to define the API key. For that, we will use process.env.node URL, an environment variable for the node URL. That refers to the app ID that we created when we created an app at Matic Vigil via rpcmumbai.maticvigil.com. So we have our mnemonic and our network link. Then after that, we need to get a Web3 instance. So we'll instantiate a new Web3 object with our provider. Then we can get our NFT contract by using our new Web3 instance dot ETH dot contract. So we're creating a contract via the Web3 provider. 
Here we have to pass in our NFT ABI. Just make sure you spelled it correct. And also we need our NFT contract address. So let's create a constant NFT contract address. So how do we access the NFT contract address? Well, we just define it. And to grab this, we can actually get it from our terminal. If you scroll up, you can see the exact contract address of the deployment of my NFT. Make sure you're under deploying my NFT and then copy that contract address. That refers to that exact deployment of the smart contract. So that is going to allow us to grab the NFT contract. Then we can mint. For that, we'll await the NFT contract methods and we're going to call mint item. Here we have to pass in an owner address for the minting. So here we have mint item and we need to declare the owner address. So we'll have a const owner address and you can directly put in your contract address here or you can use an environment variable. So in my case, I'm going to use process.env.owner address, an environment variable. And you can put all of these into environment variables, whatever you want to keep secret. All right, so we now have our owner address for the minting, but we also need one more item, and that is going to be the gateway from Pinata to our NFT JSON data. So we're going to go into our browser, then go to app.pinata.cloud and click on the nft.json file. Make sure you didn't click the collection.nft file. Then in the URL, you want to copy that entire URL. Make sure you don't get confused and copy the image link. Make sure you copy the URL of the web page. Then back in your code editor, just paste in that URL. This is the JSON link to the JSON data of your NFT contract. And again, for best practices, just change the gateway.pinata.cloud to ipfs.io. All right, so that will allow us to mint a token with that address. And then we can send it. So instead of a comma, just use dot send. Here, we're going to send from our owner address, the NFT. Then we can call console.log minted NFT. And we can also catch any errors just as best practice. We want to catch if there is an error that occurs and log it out. All right, so here we have minted an item and then sent it and logged out the results. Now, that was all in a try statement, so if something failed along the way, we need to catch the error and call console.log on the error. This was all inside of an asynchronous main function, so we do have to call that function. We'll invoke the main function, then we'll call process.exit when it's done. If there is some kind of error, again, we want to call console.log or even console.error out the error, and then process.exit1. All right, so that is all we need for our minting script. Now, how do we execute this script? We are going to go into the terminal and go into your project folder. Make sure you're not inside of the Truffle console. You're just in the regular console. And then call node mint.js. This is going to call node to execute the mint.js file. Now you have to make sure that there is indeed a file that exists that is at build slash contract slash my NFT dot JSON. So let's see, looks like we just need to add here our directory. So let's go into 
our code editor and just change our directory. We just need to remove one of the dots here because if you go into your appearance and show the sidebar, you can see currently we're inside of our project folder. So we want to go just one parent up into the project folder and then go into build and contracts and my NFT. If we went two parents up with this dot, we actually escape out of the project folder. So just make sure you have the correct path to your NFT JSON data. Then back in the terminal, you can call node mint.js again. And as long as all of your variables are spelled correctly, corresponding to the environment variables, then you should see the message minted NFT. We get this message because that is what we logged out. When we took our contract and we minted an item, we sent it from the owner address and then we logged out minted NFT. So if you see that message, it means you've been able to mint. If you don't see the message, then read any errors carefully because likely you forgot something or you spelled something wrong. If you liked this video, then go to training.mammothinteractive.com. We have tons more content on blockchain, web development, machine learning, and much more. We also have a membership for just $19 a month where you can get access to our 372 course bundle and counting.